chilly weather. Why not put on a cardigan? That was the cardigans. And for what it's worth, a lovely tune there. Uh, oh, that's a joy. We should definitely talk like that one. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Liberty Way, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton, alright? Alright. Yeah? All right. Well, we got a, a jam packed show today. Go we on. got, we got, oh. We've got so many fe- we've got more features than Carl's got on his face. <laughs> which, is, which is about the same as Morph. Yeah. Very few. It's just, it's just really a head, isn't it? A little That's t- where I've seen him before. More. On Take Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got, uh, Rockbusters. That's, that's we? still no, going no strong. feelings on that. No, but he's, 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 he's said he's gonna, um, buck his ideas up. We've got, oh, chimpanzee that. Carl finds a, uh, an amusing, uh, monkey or ape related story. Um, we've got, uh, Carl in a film again. Right, excellent. Yeah, we've had a lot of great response from that, Carl, uh, on the internet. It was my email. favourite thing we've done. People raving about that. Um, so and, what's, uh, uh, can we say what the film is? And we? excuse my friend, we've got some bloody great music. Oh, pardon me, Well, I don't know, I guess to be French. <laughs> well, I'll just give you a taste. We've got Oasis, Cardigans, you just heard there. We've got Lloyd Carl, we've got a bit of Pretenders coming out, Eminem, Feeder, Coldplay, all the greats. Can I play you some TJ's Fan Club later? Yeah, 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 yeah. What should we have now? Oasis. Go on, then. Yeah. Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. Of a Saturday. Yes. Thank you. XFM 104.9. Look at your face, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you should. We should uh, do the competition. The the uh, there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think we should. It's so good. We should. We should tease it out. Well, of them. it's it's a big it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've Sure. So I haven't really... Well, I mean, like, like, often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh, right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson and the documentary. Yeah. And now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. It was and, amazing, uh, amazing I asked Carl's opinion. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me, uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't spe- say, mention anything about the, uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his, his sort of seven hotel suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing that of note for Carl was he said to me, did you notice how big his hands are? I tell you what though, I did. What? Are you, how are you look at? The man's got like a face that he's had reconstructed. Well, I can't I even know. say that's libelous. Yeah, no, but, no, um, he hasn't. He hasn't. He's got he's an had, old he's, had two, he's had two face. jobs. Yeah. And you're looking I, at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like, is it, there's a bit of androgyny there, but it's sort of like a, it is quite a, um, petite, Sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these labourers' <laughs> hands come out. That's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? What are you kind of accuse him of being a tranny? No, he's not. No, I'm, no, he's not. What are you saying? No, no, he's, he's not. got enough issues. Now you're accusing him. Of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came out that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really. I really felt sorry for him. Um, and uh, no, I think he cleared up a few things uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work, but um. Uh, I did like the shopping spree. That was great. Extraordinary. Cause just got going around, just taste. pointing. I know it's it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's uh, anything sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like Min. But if it, yeah, I mean, and if it he, sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those uh, porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or uh, you know, an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of what transvestites. Well, it's what? Like you get what the, the, was it about his hands? Well, you, know, you know when them? you get like a cab driver or something, right? And he he decides to uh, turn transvestite about sixty, and he goes on Kilroy. Do you know right. what I mean? That way, he got a twin set of pearls, and he goes, "I've never felt so comfortable." But his hands are still big. He's got a little wig, and he's got the lipstick on, and he's with his teenage kids who are going, "Kill me." Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that well, why he was wearing that glove? You must be it. Exactly. Be it, yeah, but, but yeah. I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael, you've got a big hand. It would help him climb the trees. It, it's, it's right, yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, it, you know, it was alright. But, um, like, that got a load of attention in the press. But the Trisha programme got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, was like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like, ten o'clock in the morning, I was at work. <coughs> and he goes, uh, you so think so at ten o'clock? So you think you've been preparing yeah. this show? Most people we'll go to work about eight and nine. You're watching Trisha and that. I said, no, what is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? Um, Freaks. Was it, um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak? Mm, Siamese twins. 
Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again, because they repeat stuff on ITV2. Right. So I, I had my dinner late, right, mm. instead of having it at like one o'clock like I normally do, yeah. I had it at like 2.30, yeah. sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV2, um, these Siamese twins. Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we, we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The airy kids crop up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was lighting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the airy kid. Right. And, uh, last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was, it was weird that this program was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what, what I did think you, you think? can't refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think, I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, okay. I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam. Right, right. Anyway. And, and, and that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> no, it's so conjoined, Carl. Yeah. Get the phrase right. But you'd think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. You think that's literally Siamese twins, I'd say, well, that's, yeah. Literally now, were you stunned by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Because right. uh, they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh. <sighs> sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. God. What if one had bad breath? I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> 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 Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. There was a, a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, amazing exactly. things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like like t early learning. Uh, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slight open. Slight like dribble. <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen Ooh. it. You know, I hate that. Like when a cat sees a bird land on the balcony. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. it can't believe it's luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a like a birthday present? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? <laughs> um, I'd probably ask. Uh, yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. ...what would happen? <laughs> How'd <laughs> handle that? It's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what do they talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... Well, guess what I did today? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, brass in pocket, and if, uh, they're pretending to be good, they're doing a bloody good job of it. <laughs> I love them. That's Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl is still buzzing about these conjoined twins. Uh, it's just... One of them, of course, had to be, because one of them was sort of shorter than the other, and had to be sort of wheeled around on a kind of trolley thing oh, by, this, by the other. By this the other isn't side. Molly and Dolly, is it? No, they're not called, one's called Reba, and oh. I forget what the other one's called, Sheena, maybe, or something like that. Do you uh, remember, Carl? No, I wasn't that impressed with the names. It's just, <laughs> uh, yeah. So you immediately <laughs> put them out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Those are rubbish names, I'm just, uh, forget, 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 cough, forget, were they, forget were, them. They're gone. Were they British or American? American. Yeah, American. Oh, because I've, oh, I've seen some American ones. Well, like bizarrely, Jason. one of them was a, apparently, a country music star. This is Molly and Dolly. Well, they're not called the Molly and Dolly. The one that joined at the Oi. The one that joined I think you've made up the Molly and no, Dolly. No, it was on Jerry Springer. There's a little one that sits on a seat and the other one carries it round, uh, her round. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> They're not called Molly and Dolly. <laughs> there was something like that. They're called, well, we know that one of them's called Reba and I forget the other one. one of them's a country and western singer or something. Yeah, and one of, but she was saying, yeah, I've just, uh, made a movie. It's coming out shortly in theatres. <laughs> is your and sister in it? Yeah, and the other one said, oh, I'm not involved. <laughs> I did, uh, it's utterly bizarre because they they live they they work so hard to live their lives separate. Yeah, they say oh, it's you all know, yeah, exactly. of course. So yeah, you know they don't, they try not to. So so she's talking about her music career and the other one's sort of not taking any kind of credit for it, which is nice. It's I weird though because when she was singing as well, the other one just stands there. She doesn't join in. She doesn't sort of dance. Offer back vocals. Do you know what I mean? Make a group out of it. <laughs> yeah, a duo. Yeah, well. But it seems like we're sort of being horrible, but we're no, not. We're not. I mean, well, no, we're not. No, no, we're laughing at Carl's amazement at, mm. at this phenomenon. Sorry, I, I just got to say, we're not, we're not, you know, know the, taking you know the mickey. The really weird thing about all this, what? right? And it's annoying because you were saying about, you know, oh, what should have Trisha have asked and all that. Yeah. But one of them mentioned, um, that one of them was adopted and the other one wasn't. Don't talk rubbish. No, <laughs> seriously. I didn't understand it, right? Of course she didn't. And then Trisha sort of said, well, let's have a chat, and, and they were like, no, I don't want to go into that. What do you mean one was adopted? That's what he said, one of them, 
<laughs> I don't- uh, don't quiz me on it, but that, <laughs> that's what was- that's what was said. Hi there, I'm a- <laughs> Hello there, I'm a multi-millionaire. Oh, and yeah. I've uh, just seen your orphanage. Oh, I'd yeah, love lovely, to adopt one of your children. You'd like to adopt one? I'd love to adopt a children. I've got loads from around the world, so I'd love yeah. to adopt one. I'd, I'd give you $10,000 oh, towards wow, your- Oh, wow, 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 well, we're, we're speeding through then, yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. We've actually got two left. I so need one. I'm only interested right. in one. Yeah, I don't okay. need any more. Don't need any They're more. Sisters, they're sisters. They, uh, they're I know it would be tragedy to break them up, but I really need one. Now, break it up. There's the, there's the rub, you see. Sure, because, sure. Um, you just need the one. There's $10,000 now. You can have that. I'll sign it now, but okay. I don't want to discuss I'll it for I'll bring it around. I'll bring it around. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Ding dong. Hi, yeah, brilliant. You brought my kid, right? Yeah, there she is there. That's, That's a joy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just standing next to a bush. Yeah, do you want to, can you bring her out towards no, me? It's like, there's, it's like, there's nothing behind the bush, so just, you just want, do I you just want, want, I want to be able to, I just want to be able to walk 360 degrees round her. Do you want her or not? Yes, I, I can't believe it! 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's time for the, the newest quiz in town. <laughs> this is where Carl inserts himself into a seminal film. Last week, um, it was the little kid in Sixth Sense. You remember? To, uh, a great acclaim. The critics loved it. They said a triumph. Uh, this week, he's fiddled with The Graduate. Um, this is the scene where, of course, uh, uh, he goes upstairs to the hotel room, and, um, he's, uh, it's, it's on the cards. She's a dead set, Mrs. Robinson. Well, there you go, then. So, uh, are you ready for it? And I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Thank you, then. What? Will you bring me a hair? A what? Hang on. Tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. Alright. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and, uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I, I never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about me head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Head should be it's round. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy ass. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I've come oh, that was a joy. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. It was an absolute treat. Now, I should say that, obviously, uh, the prize is a copy of The Graduate. Now, bear in mind that XFM is giving away these prizes. Yeah. Carl is so cheap that he wouldn't even buy it on DVD. He's bought oh. it for six ninety nine on VHS. It'll be panned and scanned. It won't be widescreen. There's none of the extra features that you get on the DVD. Oh, That's look at Carl's face. He's got it. Carl, did you pocket the rest of the cash? No, no. I have to use my own money to buy these, right? What, you're, you're using your own money to give this stuff away? Yeah. So I had to go and buy that. XFM is so cheap, I understand. I know. Right? I know. And, uh, it's not worth having it on DVD, is it? Why it's not? An, it's an old film, so... <laughs> So the quality is, is, do you know what I mean? They can't really tidy it up. Of course they can! They do it from a print. They don't do it from the video. They don't get, they don't get the video and go, let's make it into yeah, a DVD. An old Betamax copy <laughs> that someone had knocking about. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, you it's can- the same can... film, though, isn't it? Uh, Fine, okay, well, yeah, you're right, yeah. So, film, anyway, yeah. you can win, uh, six ninety-nines <laughs> worth of The Graduate. The question, and it's email only, Steve, uh, Steve, it's not Steve, it's Ricky, dot gervais at xfm.co.uk. The question is, name the actor that Carl uh, was taking the place of in the film, and of course the actress that he's performing opposite. Ricky dot gervais at xfm.co.uk. Lovely. Do you want to play something from there? I would love to. It would seem appropriate. Yeah. 
you know, Mr. Garth, Uncle, please, let's not have the sound of silence. Let's have some more beautiful music. Get back together, please, quickly. Uh, that's, that's I think what... you should do every single lick. <laughs> It's the best bit of the show. <laughs> uh, that's uh, on XFM 104.9. Are we well, going to have time to play the clip again before, uh, I don't know, before two o'clock, let's say? Are people not listening to the question? Is that what you're- Some just, people are not listening to the question. Oh dear. Okay, well we'll play it again at about two then. And personally any excuse to hear it again, because I thought it was- I, th I think Carl should go out and get the DVD. I think it's embarrassing to give away the- uh, Yeah, the you have to get it, you have to go out and buy the DVD later. Carl, on the DVD, it's got a booklet, it's got an audio commentary, it's got behind the scenes features, and it's got this pristine widescreen version of the film. You've got some cheap 6 99 version. Yeah, and on so, VHS. because you were being mean, because it was your own money, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to waste that now, because yeah. no one wants it. So it's gonna cost you twice as much as it would have done if you just got the DVD the first time round. <laughs> a valuable mm. lesson learned. Yeah. Have, I re have I rewound it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a penalty if you've not. No, you haven't rewound it. Go and get the DVD later. They still, were they gonna win a DVD? No, I looked at the DVD and it was 18 quid. I'm Go and get it! Quid and it. claim it back! No, you've gotta wait What ages. a cheap station this is! It's outrageous. I mean, oh. Well, do you wanna go on with the other prizes with, uh, what we're giving away later? What, what is this for Rockbusters? Well, we don't give away prizes, we throw away prizes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> really clearing out, cleaning <laughs> yeah. out some drawers in XFM. Go on. I'm just having a quick look through before I- Cause we've sorta of revamped Rockbusters a bit, there's that extra bit. In it now, and then that audio bit. You're selling it, you're big, big sell. Oh, we I'm not going straight into that yet, though. There's a DVD, no, 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 no. there's a DVD there, what's I'll, that? I'll go through them later, Rick, I just need to absorb it. Don't so, get excited, So, uh, who did, uh, Carl play in the clip? What actor's place did he, uh, take, and what actress played opposite him? Um, that's ricky.gervais. At xfm.co.uk. Sure. Brilliant. Yeah. Is that it, then? We'll what we got all coming up, we've got some... Play a bit of Coldplay. A bit of Coldplay be right. Get it on DVD, it's an embarrassment. Seven quids worth of old video, pan and scanned. I bought it now, that's what they're getting. Right. They've put a downer on it. All the work, you know, that went into that, and then just gonna fob them off with a bit of old celluloid like that. Well, listen, still to come, right? We've got, um, the, the monkey thing. Ooh, chimpanzee that! And when I was out, Last Sunday, right, at Johnny's birthday party. Yeah. Steve was there. Yeah. Got talking about stuff. Um, and a debate that we didn't really finish cropped up. It blew your mind, didn't it? Amazing. Oh, right. I know about this. Steve told me. This is the, uh, infinite amount of monkeys. Um, or a monkey with a typewriter and an infinite amount of time would eventually come up with the works of Shakespeare. Yeah. There was no debate. It's a philosophical, mathematical problem. There's no debate, it's true. It won't happen. No, listen, Carl, listen. Infinity sorts it all out for you, right? An infinite amount of monkeys at a time, right? They would do, they do everything. They type everything. Infinity just sorts it all out for you. There's no get into it and they're going, oh well, uh, let's have a look what they've done. <gasps> this one's come close, he did Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> it would do it all. It would type everything ever possible, conceivable. Yeah, the, but it's a, it's a, it's a mathematical well, infinity. Well, we've sort. heard your side of the argument, Rick. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, it's a persuasive one. But let's hear Carl because he yeah. heard about this in a pub last week. Yeah, so what's he's your got problem? Some strong what's your problem himself? with it? What's your problem with it? Well, f first of all, right, you're saying it's a load of monkeys. It's not just one monkey that's it depends. That can live forever. It depends. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's either a, a chimpanzee with a typewriter with an infinite amount of time. He would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay, or it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already that's, that's sort of, that's not right. You either need to have what one monkey. What do you mean, what, what, you mean, Let, uh, employment laws, what can't... do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out, please. Okay. If it's one monkey, <laughs> yeah, with a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right, at least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't, it's not- Keep going! Cry. If you've got a load of monkeys, it's like, it's like if you have too many, what's that saying about too many chefs Too many spoil chimps spoil the soup. Right, well it's the same thing, it's like, well I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it, I was gonna put salt in it, and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying uh, is- I, I, I'll just leave him go. I can't be bothered I want to hear, I want uh, to hear it, the th This blows my mind, he doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just that I just don't think it will happen. What I mean, do you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you, by definition. 
Well, what's stopping them typing the same thing again? They would. They, in fact, the problem should be, if you had an infinite amount uh, uh, of time, that, um, it would type, that works with Shakespeare an infinite amount of times, and everything else an infinite amount of times. But, you know, that's not, that's just, that's, that's not as- But not, not Shakespeare. Oh! Shut up! You, you know, idiot! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him, uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of runkies, infinite number of typewriters, they will e type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot! Play a I record, said, no, I'm not having this conversation. Not I'm not having it, I'm not having it, because it really, really winds me up. But you're saying they'll do it with no spelling errors. Well, they do it, uh, uh, they do it an infinite amount of times. And they do it, they do it wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it, and they spell, uh, the last full stop. Uh, wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it and they get one thing wrong in Hamlet wrong an infinite amount of times. They do everything an infinite amount of times. But are they going off a story that they've- Play a record, Carl, cause I'm gonna knock you out! I'm just saying- Shut up! Do they know the story? Oh! Good that, innit? On XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. As yeah. ever, Rick, there's always someone who steps in to defend Carl. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what is the defence? What Here's is the defence? Here's a, a, an email from Scott Coomer. He says, Carl is actually right. I've got an A-level in statistics and probability. It doesn't matter how long they have and how many monkeys you have, you cannot guarantee they would type the complete works of Shakespeare. Infinity makes it probable they, they would get it right, but not definite. Yeah. Well, y yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. No. No, you weren't saying, Carl. You don't understand it. Infinity sort of sorts it out. That if they do, if they do, if they do anything, they they nearly do everything, won't they? No, I mean they'll give it a good shot. Like that. <laughs> no, that's not the point. But, but the I'd point be is surprised this... if they did one page right. Right, listen, <laughs> it's not to do with consciousness. It's not to do with them aiming. They're it's, just bashing away it's at like, the keyboard. It's, it's like they're, they're they're used to show that there isn't consciousness. They 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 chose the chimpanzee because it can type, presumably. It's because hit the keyboard. It's because they hadn't come across you at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's to take out thought out of it. It's to take out reason and trying. Right. It's just random. They're saying that if you typed enough things, if a computer was left like that, typing everything, if you left it for an infinite amount of time, and they chose Shakespeare because there is meaning behind it, and it's difficult to get it exactly right, to show you that Infinity would come up with a sh it's not just Shakespeare, it's every novel. It's everything. Fairly eloquent there from Gervais. A quick repost please from Carl Pilkington. No, I'm just saying what I don't understand. If it hasn't read it, then how does uh, it know where it's gone? Oh! I- listen, right, I, okay, listen, right, I- I- I can can't- I, can I just- Look, can I just explain to people, right? Some people have said, oh, why are you cruel to Carl? He drives me mental with things well. like that. What do you mean, well? Well, well I just- well, let me just- You just, deny you it. just take a breather for How do I do your editing? He keeps coming in the week. You know that I work here properly, <laughs> yeah, in the week, don't I? Yeah, I've got a proper job, yeah? Yeah. Uh, should be nine to five, but I normally get in at about eight o'clock and work A lot of people get in at eight o'clock. Working hard, trying to do my job. Three times this week, I've been rushing around, I walk past my little studio, he's sat in there, alright? <laughs> now, because I've got this sort of job, I can get away with it. I said to him, if I was a doctor... <laughs> Would he keep coming to me practice? If you were a doctor, there'd be <laughs> severe problems with the NHS. Well, oh, imagine so that. Uh, I the standards I, would have lowered so much we to, go to if lunch. you can arrive at the hospital, you're a we'll doctor. We'll pop in, I go to lunch, don't we? We have a little lunch break, don't we? I go, come on, let's go now. He goes, I'm busy. I go, come on, let's go now. He's going, oh, you're doing me, Eddie. Well, when I was talking about the monkey conundrum with Carl, he said to me, right, if I had a day off work, and I was, say, watching the TV, and with one hand I was typing a uh, typewriter, <laughs> would I type Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, but you see, there's certain things. We were talking a little bit l about this stuff the other week, weren't we? When we said uh, <laughs> you were going on about Einstein, and I said he's not that good. Um, you know, he equals MC squared. You know, it sounds good, but I've never used it. And that, that, <laughs> I've never you know. used it. Uh, you haven't used two and two equals four, Carl. The fellow with an apple fell on his head. You know. It could have been anyone sat under that tree. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky. Yeah. And, and it just Newton to be gets a all Newton gets all the credit <laughs> no, yeah. you know for his laws of the universe. <laughs> well, other people were working whilst he was having a lunch break <laughs> under the tree. Okay. So in a way, it's like he didn't deserve to have that again, success story. Again, forget the apple and the tree and whether he was sitting down or having a lunch break. It's, it's totally irrelevant. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, there's certain things that will just happen. You know, it's like I think we were talking when we were out eating the other week. 
<laughs> we were talking about Noel Gallagher. Well, this is reason the, the monkey right. discussion came up, right? We were God. Noel Gallagher. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Rick, I don't want to misquote. I'm like Herbert Lom in Clue Song. I'm gonna get a twitch whenever he opens his mouth. I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know where to start with some of his statements. Well. As I say, this all, this discussion began because we were talking about a quote that Noel Gallagher supposedly gave. Now, I don't want to misquote Gallagher, but the gist of it was that he said, um, uh, had I, uh, written Wonderwall or whatever, instead of the Beatles writing Strawberry Fields or whatever, I'd be the one that was considered the great songwriter and it wouldn't be the Beatles, you know, it's just the fact that they came first that meant that they get all the credit as being the greatest band I in the world. I don't know where to start with that statement either. I mean, that's Gallagher's thing and, uh, and he's, you know, well, whatever, we know what you think, we think of that. What was your point, Carl? I, you agreed with him, didn't you? Yeah, I reckon, right? Do you know we've talked about putting a baby in a room before and it, and it'll know what colour it is and stuff? If if you've got a room that's painted red, right? But uh, forget that, because that's going to confuse Hear him out, hear him out. Can I, can I, can I, can I, hear listen him to out. me. Say if they did some new TV show, right? Like, um, what's that film with Jim Carrey in where the, uh... The Truman Show. The Truman Show, right? So they make up a little room and, uh, some woman has some kids and you say, right, Let's put the kids in this room, and they don't know what's going on outside. They, they, they don't know anything about like EastEnders and that. It's like their little world, right? They don't know anything that's gone on. How could a child survive without EastEnders? <laughs> right. Listen. So you sat in the room, right? And then when they're all asleep, right, this, wait for this bit. Someone. Have you, have you heard this? Yeah. Bit? Wait for this bit. They're all in a room. Yeah. They're asleep. Yeah. Someone pops in, puts a guitar next to the bed, <laughs> right? Nips off out again. They wake up in the morning. And, uh, one of them goes, what's this? They don't even know it's a guitar because they've never seen one, right? They're talking English though. Yeah. We just left the guitar out of the recovery. Right, so... There's plenty more to come. So, one of them will pick it up and they'll go, I don't know what it is, and they'll start strumming, they'll go, that sounds good, doesn't it? Give them a few weeks, they could come up with Hey Jude. Whereas, saying, typing Shakespeare, a monkey that can't even spell. I see that. <laughs> uh, we can't answer it. I might come with you, Rick, if that's okay, all right. Because we've got, we got a sort of that Christmas it. special as well. Yeah, yeah, no, sure, sure. Oh, I, I see okay. that. Yeah. I'm sure not been as well. Steamy Battles of Pink Robots and XFM 104.9. Before the ad break, Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle. Great track. Lovely to hear that. Brilliant track. We're not scared of playing that sort of stuff, are we? Indeed. We've got some great. Mo I think we're underestimated here. People think we're just like, you know. Two guys and a buffoon in a room. <laughs> but it's so much more than that. We, you know, we try and put together a whole package for them, don't yeah. they? For their Saturday afternoon listening pleasure. If there was an infinite number of us three in an infinite, in an infinite number of studios, yeah. broadcasting for an infinite number of shows, would we ever do anything half decent? Yeah, we eventually. Would we ultimately come up with something quite what good? What was that email that you were laughing at? I can, it's too rude. What does it say? It's well, too, it's too nasty. Oh, oh God, give me the gist of it. The gist of it was that um, it would mean that if there was that infinite number of monkeys, eventually, besides the fact that they would type the complete works of Shakespeare, they would also type the sentence, Carl Pilkington is a genius, but the email also said it would also type, Ricky Gervais is a, I can't say the word, but, uh, I know. Yeah. But the number of times they type it and write, Carl Pilkington is a genius and Ricky Gervais is a cund. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, they were, they were, that would be there a lot. Um, yeah. Before we uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. Dickers! Richie I Anderson! You, Dicky Docky Doo! Richard Anderson! Thanks for emailing. He's, and, uh, my, uh, he's my biggest fan. He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, that's what's the thing about Dicky. And from Anders this week, he says, Ricky, I'm lazy, I talk nonsense, I'm badly organised, and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show? <laughs> um, uh, possibly, uh, Anders, maybe send in a CV. Or email uh, a CV. He's got a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? <laughs> oh, well, ask him if he's a goggle eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't no, mean no, to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean nasty. you. No did need I? to get nasty. Well, well so I was thinking about that, actually, Steve. Oh, God. <laughs> Just talking of. of the old, uh. What? What? Talking of the what? No. Do you know, like. This better be good. No, <laughs> you don't have that many girlfriends and that. What do you mean? Carl, why are we on this? I wasn't- I was defending you in the whole monkey discussion. Come on, what's oh, your point? What's your point? What's your point? No, what's the point? What's the point? I just was thinking... <sighs> if there was an infinite number of Steves? <laughs> <laughs> you're not- you, you know, you're an odd-looking fella. Uh, come on, Carl, get to the- No, you know I know that. I've told you that loads of times. What do you mean, you know I know that? Well, there's no point pretending anymore. <laughs> Steve, I'm- 
I am flabbergasted. But also, you don't like spending money, right? <gasps> He's mean and weird looking! Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna- oh! Are you sort of, oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. you know- <laughs> You've gotta love him though, haven't you? What- what are you happier with? The fact that no girls like you enough, right? <laughs> this is meant- this is really mental! Or, are you happy because you don't have to spend any money on a card for someone? Which a little from column A. <laughs> a little from column B. <laughs> Wait, let's have, let's have more monkey news. What well, have we got? No, we've got a We've got so answer. much to get into this show. Insults, We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What angers me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was, well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> Condoms? You bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can have a go at me. <laughs> to no, be fair. No, but I don't just treat her on Valentine's. I'm always... Do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. <laughs> you don't even treat her at Christmas or on nah, her birthday. When do you treat hang her? Hang on a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute there. Oh, uh, why I order? <laughs> what what Wait a minute. What was that? Deputy dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, and I've only met her twice. <laughs> I took her out last night and she enjoyed herself. Where'd yeah. you go? Until she had to write the cheque. Where'd you go? Where'd you to, go? Uh, to a chippy. A, a really... <laughs> oh. Play record! It's to a, a chippy? <laughs> no, a really quality one. Right. Oh, God! One under a fiver for two... Oh, nice lots. wrapping. Not newspaper, greaseproof paper. And bread. Right. We've got so much to get through. All right. All right. Uh, all right. London's shit, innit? Um... Sorry, I not swear on an on-air, on-air much studio. Never, never swear on an on-air studio. Yeah. Um, apologies, not really swearing, is it? I'll tell you what swearing is. <laughs> oh, um, so, uh, yeah, graduate, you're gonna play that again and give a winner, give a winner. Well, let's hear it, uh, so it's Carl Pilkington featuring in <laughs> The Graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go then. So, uh, you ready for it? And have, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Thank you, Lynn. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. <sighs> Tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. Why? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? I don't want to be fine. Alright. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, No. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Wet fingers as well, but not related, and, uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about me head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Ed should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy ass. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, dear. A classic. An Oscar-winning classic. Oh, Carl Pilkington. In The Graduate. But what was the question, Steve? The question was, which actor was Carl Pilkington taking the role of? Well, that's easy. Yeah, which actress knows that. was he uh, performing opposite? I know that. And the answer's Ricky? Hoffman. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, Bancroft. And Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, and the <laughs> 699 VHS cassette is going to Laura Gomez because she says that she'd be happy with the VHS, not the DVD, so, uh, best of luck to her. I hope she enjoys that. All right. Yeah? What will we do next week? Uh, I've oh, got loads of, it. um, uh... I quite like hearing Carl in a sort of seductive environment. It gives you another insight into him. It gives you another dimension. I know. E.T. it is then. <laughs> yeah, Civilly to each other first before we start making it rhyme. <laughs> oh, Rockbusters, Carl? 
Yeah. I'm not a champion of rockbusters, as you know, but I think it's overstayed its welcome. But I'm well, going to go along I think with Carl's it. just giving the fans what they want here. Okay. It's a popular thing, isn't it? Got some good prizes. The press well. behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what the prizes are. Uh, it's a dance music compilation, Cream Trance Anthems 2003. Brilliant. I play a lot of trance on well, this Well, I, I put that on quite a lot and dance <laughs> exactly. to it myself. Uh, this is the uh, original motion picture soundtrack to the forthcoming film adaptation. When you've seen the film, uh, I'm sure that will mean more to you. You it's like that, don't you? It's a good movie, yeah. Nicholas Cage I playing himself and a twin brother. And uh, it's written by uh, Spike, uh, it's directed by Spike John. Joined at the, uh, what? Uh, no, no, they're not joined mm -hmm. at the hip at all, no. or, or at the face. And uh, we've also got the best one-hit wonders album in the world ever. What have we got on there? We've got things like uh, The Crazy World of Arthur Brown, brilliant. Um, Nana, 99 Red Balloons. The Rembrandt. In fact, it kicks off with Nana. Sure. Uh, then followed up by I'll Be There For You, The Thing From Friends by the Rembrandts. Yeah. And of course, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Brilliant. Deep Blue Something. <laughs> is that the worst name ever? I think it possibly is. No, Sixpence <laughs> None The Richer. Sixpence None The Richer. That's a pretty good. bad name. Okay, again, we, we I know we've got a lot of uh, Chill Out fans who listen uh, to us. Yeah, so, um, yeah, 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 the best yeah. Chill Out album ever. Yeah. Bear in mind, of course, all these prizes collated by uh, Carl from, I guess, People's Drawers. Yeah, looking in the drawer, looking in the drawer. <laughs> oh, dearie me. What is it? The only thing probably worth having is a, um, I mean, it's topical, if nothing else, Carl. A seven inch by the White Stripes, Merry Christmas from the White Stripes. That was their, um, exclusive Brilliant. Christmas single, so if yeah, that's, it's, that's it's early, isn't it? That's, uh, it's you get that. It is worth A lot of people have got to wait 11 months before that's released. Yeah. Or is it last Christmas is? <laughs> exactly. And I have never heard of this DVD. Go on. I like to think of myself as being fairly familiar with TV and films, but I have never heard of Stephen King's Rose Red. <laughs> Welcome on to DVD. a place evil calls home. And, uh, it's on DVD, it's Certificate 12, so don't imagine anything too shocking. And it looks, uh, appalling. Is Rose Red Mansion truly haunted? To find out, Professor Duh, 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 some Okay, we've the, got the gist of it. They're it's not very really good prizes. prizes, they're cobbled together, but if you've got nothing better to do, call in if you know the answers to these clues. It's Rockbusters. Let's not right, let them so call in, Rick. Please I'll don't let you. those people call in. I'll no, no, they're not calling in. It's email only. Carl, don't interrupt me. I'm just. Um, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email only. I can't stress that enough. We just don't want to speak to you people. <laughs> like, go on. Right, so I give some initials out and a cryptic clue, and it makes up the answer and that. Well, sometimes it does, yeah. Go There's on. two of them, there's a new aspect, which I'll explain about in a minute. Oh, so, God. the first one is, uh, cryptic clue is, well, if he would've been wearing an helmet, he would've been alright. <coughs> and the initial there is B, right? So, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. B, right? Uh, and or an artist. Second one, uh, why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? <laughs> okay. All right, initials it just fills me with... Oh. D, S, D, S, why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? All right? And the, uh, final bit <laughs> to Rockbusters, uh, it's a new bit. Last week I played you this. <laughs> His face goes along right. with it. That's, uh, that's someone beating up a dog. That was smack my bitch up, right? So, here's some sound effects and that, and they make up a song. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to him talk all day. Let's have a listen to the effects. <laughs> right. That's terrifying. Right, I told you not to play that one. It's rubbish. No one will get that. Well, we'll see. I heard that. I can't always say what I think. I said it's rubbish. No one will get it. No, it's not the one you think it is. Ah, right. So, um, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and you can win that stuff. I'm a little bit confused. Let me, I, I, I'm here. I've heard what you're saying. We've discussed this in the past. I don't know what's happening. What's that? Is that, a, is that a clue? That's a cryptic clue, that, that um, screaming to a song, is it? It was screaming. Well, don't say it. So it should stand up by itself. Don't give them any clue. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. So this is the name of a song. It's not a band or an artist. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so the song. first two are uh, bands or artists, and the, the, the last one <laughs> is the name <laughs> of a song. I said we should abandon this! I said we should just pack it in. Come Zemo. on, someone talk. <laughs> I'm looking at his face, his headphones are too loud. Instead of turning them down, he's just grimacing, going, these are too loud. <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah. How have you lived this long? How did you make it to 30 without getting squashed or eating something deadly poisonous? I told you, I used to choke a lot. We've had an email from, uh, uh, Placebo, the bitter end. We've had an email from Andrew Forrest, who has just simply entitled it, Carl Pillockton. 
Oh, Carl Pillington. <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh, that's gotta be your new name from now on. Uh I had a mate who, uh, who used to use it. What, he used, he used to call you that? Yeah. Was that your nickname at school, Pillington? No, it's not my nickname. It is now. No, it's not. It is now. Pillington. Pillington. Oi, Pillington. Oi, Pillington. Pillington, do Oi. my homework. Where Actually. do you live? Where do you come from? Pillington? No, there's this lad who, uh, called Mark, right, who he used to go to school with, who, uh, used to call me that. And, uh, his mum, right, was, like, obsessed with cleaning. And I was never allowed in their flat. <laughs> 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 he makes the place look untidy. So she used to, I don't know if it was just me or all his mates, but I used to turn up and she goes, yeah, he is in, but you know what you've got to do? And I used to have to go round the side of his flat, and he had a computer, right, which he used to play, I, I didn't have one at that point, but he had one. And I used to have to go round the side of the flat and stand at his bedroom window. <laughs> With his window open, and I'd be sort of leaning in, playing the game. <laughs> you are joking. I'm not, his mum. You had the weirdest thing <laughs> I've ever heard. The, the thing you were willing to do is the strangest. What is this town like? No, stop going. Was, was there always the music? <laughs> There's the horse in the house there. Oh, look at these two kids with big heads and webbed feet. All right, all right, Ronnie. All right, Reggie. What? What was no, it, it was, like? She was. She was. Obsessed. It is like you've grown up in a cartoon made for children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, his mum was really, um, obsessed with cleaning. I, I, when, um... Can I play through his window? <laughs> I used to... Put Mrs. Brown's bottom, can I play through Mark's window? Aye, you know what you have to do. She used to be up to that. Is that the Pillington morning. again? It's <laughs> 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 have you yeah. washed your hands? What, up till three in the morning, washing? She used to be up doing the tiles in the kitchen. Washing until three in the morning? Until three in the morning. And for ages and ages, I, that's, what, that's saying that out on the tiles, I used to think that came from... Like, his mum, because she was out, like, cle cleaning them late, so, until I was about 13, I thought that saying, out late, on the tiles, yeah. was... And now you're not confused by anything. <laughs> well? There's no misunderstandings in your life now, is there? So, so what did, was he was allowed to walk in and out of the house, was no, he? No, he, he was alright, but, and he used to come round to ours a lot, and my mum used to get these pies from Agenbach's, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's at that bakery where they used to chop the cakes out the back, oh, I yeah. told you about. Yeah. Oh, and you at six, you at six. He loved it, but I could never go round to theirs, or if I did, it was like, well, yeah, he is in, and I'd go, alright, and then I'd, I'd walk round the side of the flat. <laughs> <laughs> stand outside. <laughs> Why did you ever knock at the door? Why didn't you just go round and knock on the window? Just to check his in, because he wasn't always in his room. You if say he was it was a lounge, like... he'd have to go to his bedroom and then... That's you say to meet you. I, this is the strangest, and you'd play a computer game through the window. You yeah. say it was a flat, it wasn't like a fifth story one, and you had to get in one of those kind of cleaning contraptions <laughs> and like, <laughs> winch your way up. I'm not I love floor. the idea of that. So, oh, Pillockton. So, right, uh, we're done, right, so what, have you got me any, uh, chimpanzee that, We've or? We've got monkey news still, still to cram in, in the next, like, Let's do monkey news hours. now. I, want, no, I need some monkey no, news. No, I think we've done enough here, right? What do you mean? I think we've done enough here. We'll, we'll play a little song, eh? What, the play, um, play the verb. Oh. Go on, he's getting all stressed because I screamed. Sparky stream, Teenage Fan Club. I'll tell you, I'm sick of the screaming, Rick. I'm <laughs> sick of that. <laughs> I mean, no wonder Carl hates you, and that is a word I don't use often, but he does, and I've spoken to him in the past, and he loathes you. Monkey news. Give us one of the screams so the audience at home gets a taste of it. I'm taking my headphones off. No, I'm not going to scream. Go on, let's see what they- ah! Right, That wasn't what you were doing. Uh, was it worse than that? Yes! Right, come on, monkey news. We're, we're not, not gonna win- It's not called monkey news. Uh, chimpanzee, we're not gonna pack all the monkey stuff in. We've got quarter of an hour. What- what other show can say that? <laughs> yeah. We've got- we're not gonna pack in all the monkey yeah. news. We've got fifteen minutes where we can't get all the monkey information. <laughs> right, come on. Well, you're gonna love this one. Uh, go on, is there a- let's have the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Right, Um I don't know how recent this was. Oh god. 17th century? But it, ha it happened in Acne, right? <laughs> Uh, if you're outside London, that's in that place in London. Um, and it's this monkey that's going about acne, nicking DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Even the monkey didn't go for videos. <laughs> Even the monkey knew. Well, there's no point in getting on VHS. The grudge on VHS. You're having it. Throw it back. Right, and there's a girl called Lisa who works in our office here, right, and I mentioned it to her because she lives in Hackney. I said, uh, you familiar with this? And, uh, she said, oh, I remember something about it, which annoyed me. The fact that a monkey's running riot, but she couldn't, she didn't know the full story, <laughs> and she lives there. What, you, what do you mean a monkey? Do you mean a, do you mean a chimpanzee? Or a um, monkey? I don't know, is he a zoo in Hackney? 
Is there a zoo there? I, I don't know what sort it was. But it, it, it was like- Is there on. a zoo in Hackney? I don't know. I don't know. That's what I was asking. <laughs> so, right, um, get on with the story. So anyway, so yeah, it's been robbing stuff. And um, <laughs> the, the other bit that really puzzled me, right, is the fact that- And you're not easily puzzled by monkey news. They took fingerprints. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they took fingerprints presumably because they didn't know it was a monkey to start with. No, they did. They saw it. They saw it nicking stuff, <laughs> and they said, "Get fingerprints." What? So that means there's more than just one doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart. He had to fax them to Interpol. Yeah, yeah. We know that is. Yeah, it's Brian. It's Brian the monkey. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry, I don't. Understand. He was stealing DVDs specifically. DVDs. Yeah, DVDs. I think it said watches and stuff. What breaking into homes? Yeah, in Hackney. Maybe. Are you sure somewhere? it wasn't a kid with a mask on? No, seriously. How was he breaking into homes? They're good, at the they? drain pipe. They're good, aren't they? They're good, aren't they? <laughs> but how would they do so that? So is that the news? <laughs> well, that's what, how much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news? For, for this week. <laughs> well, I don't know that it's true. Again, I've got nothing there was, to- there was other stuff. There was another story that I found about a monkey, but I'd, I would like to know from someone if, in Hackney if- Do you know what I mean? And I missed that one on Crime Watch. Which would have been good, <laughs> right? But there was another story about one that uh, kept getting on buses, not paying its fare, not paying its fare, and just sat in a corner reading the paper. <laughs> reading the paper, Carl, you an idiot. Well, that that wasn't in London. You an idiot. That was in America. It wouldn't read somewhere. the paper. Why would it read the paper? Because it was its way of sort of going, oh well, if I'm reading something, maybe the inspector. <laughs> Oh, the inspector will notice my hairy hands. Oh, Carl, you're such a fool! Well, Killington. Carl, Carl, we've just had a news flash that an infinite number of monkeys in Hackney are nicking an infinite number of typewriters. Yeah. We don't know what for. At this stage, we've got no more information. And they've, they've taken back an infinite amount of graduate on video. <laughs> XFM, there might be some monkey news. <laughs> and they waited two hours for that. That one. What sort of, what sort of a show has a feature called monkey news? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, the, uh, the monkey story has been cooperated. Someone Which emailed. one? Well, this one, uh, it says, uh, police in Britain this week are on the lookout for a very different kind of burglar, a chimpanzee who has been sighted breaking into a house in Hackney, stealing a mobile phone and leaving. The chimp is also the prime suspect in a break and entry in a nearby house where part of a radio was taken. One policeman stated that it might have been trained to steal, but a monkey's not gonna think, that's a mobile phone, I'll just have that. Look at Carl's face. Yeah. Fact. That's fact. So, um, rockbusters then. Yeah. Get these out of the way, we're running out of time now. I have to say now that so. we've had no answers that have attempted even to guess all three. Right, you see, now, see, that's because you're an idiot. Uh, right, okay, right, do, do the question, do the questions and the answers, and uh, if, 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 if I think that it's either too hard or ungettable because it's stupid, we're binning it. All right. I thought we'd already been. I'm annoyed. That right, come on, do 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 do, what, do 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 it quickly. Uh, the first one was well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. Right, what's the answer? That was B. What's the answer? Busted. Right, that works. All Busted. Right. That's fair enough. Did anyone get that? I assume no. some people got. No. People have given up, Rick. People aren't even bothering to contribute. Right, what's the next one? They've just ignored it like it never happened. Uh, Busted. Second Busted. one. Um, Busted. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Go on. So that was DS. Yeah. Seventies uh, band. The Trout Spinners. <laughs> <laughs> the Detroit Spinners have become the D Trout Spinners. Yeah. Okay. Um, Brilliant. And then the final bit, I'll play you some effects. Let's hear like this. this. Let's <laughs> it's terrifying, Carl. It's terrifying. Well, what's happened there? What what was happening? What, no, 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 no. What's the answer? That was uh, born slippy. She, the woman was having a baby. The doctor tried to grab it. It fell onto the floor. <laughs> That's in your head, Carl. That's just a load of screams. That's in your head. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I'm. T I, I, do you know what? I haven't even got onto born slippy. I'm still on the <laughs> trout spinners. Well, let's put a song. That's it. Uh, I don't. I don't know what to say. Steve, a song for the- A song for the ladies, surely. Uh, let's Did anyone with, get any of those? Let's say with Nick Drake, 
and the beautiful river man and we'll see you next week and hopefully oh, we'll see we'll be trout spinners well, Pilkerton, we have got a great show lined up for you absolutely today it's just uh yeah valentine's weekend some love songs Ooh. we've got some chat and of course the competitions i'll tell you what i, I was walking here today and the West End is crammed. There's helicopters, there's police, there's about a million people sort of just milling around, standing around with placards and stuff. I don't know what they're doing, but they've got too much time on that. They, they need a war. You don't read the newspapers, do you? Boring. Ooh, those boys can rock there. That's the guns with all their roses. <laughs> and sweet child of mine. <laughs> on oh, XFM 104.9. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, rocks hope, I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a- cos you don't go to bed, do you, early? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think- I, I just always mm. find that thing that if, you know, you're used to living with someone- Yeah. One of you will go, well, let's go to bed then, you'll go, all right. Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh. You just forget to go to bed. You just stay up. Okay, stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food, that's just the plate. All right, okay. Yeah. No, I just, I, I stayed up and watched, um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not, not the fact that he's the living dead and there's- No. Nope. And drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he can in mirrors. Well- And you can, go on. The mirror thing, you can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors, but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Right, that still doesn't work. Go okay, on. go on. It doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work at all. Come on, Well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> How neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> B blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> 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 I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre farting's too neat. How does he do it without a mirror? Ah, oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. it was- The it real Dracula, the real Dracula. <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. Dracula. It's just a film, it had blood on the floor or something, it's called. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. From 1970. Yeah. Right, but you, you say that and watch that. You know there aren't yeah, really sure. vampires that, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it still annoys you that his centre farting was too neat. Well, if you're gonna do it- do you know what I mean? I'd like to see him with a fringe, sort of pushed forward, mm. and maybe a hood up, alright? Come to stop your blood and that, alright? Uh Yeah, just bits of tissue paper all over his face yeah, where oh, he's cut himself oh, shaving. Oh, I can't see. Bloody mirrors <laughs> annoy me now, aren't it? Yeah. I'd love to see that. A little mank drac. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, that, that might be a film that we do in, uh, our movie. Mancula. Just, just getting onto that. Mancula. Count Mancula. <laughs> alright? <laughs> <laughs> you got any rave? You got any rave music? Like, huh? <laughs> Trying to waste this like that? Like, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, he came from Manchester. Please welcome Mancula. Alright? <laughs> that'd be great, wouldn't it? His hair's a mess. Well, I can't see a mirror, can I? <laughs> well, we've got a show lined up for you. Um, sad news. For Rockbusters fans, it is going to be the last Rockbusters. Does that mean that we are doing another one and it's the last one? Or we are doing another one together? and it's the last one. Oh, man. I've got a bit of a special one, Steve. Have you? Yeah. Um, it's just sort of done. Oh, it makes uh, sense. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> First time only. No, it's it's uh, it's done on accents because I'm running out of like clues and that to use. Oh, is this as bit good as the Jamaican one? Uh, <laughs> the the D Trout Spinners. <laughs> the Trout Spinners that doesn't work. At all. A bit like that. Okay, so go on, what's, uh, what's the gist of this one? Well, it's just, um, I've been the sound effects bit, that, that didn't really wow. work out. So there's three sort of cryptic clues. Yep. yep. And, sort uh, of cryptic, yeah. it's done on, uh, it's done on accents, and I've sort of worked down the country, so I've got a northern one, mm -hmm. I've got a brummy one, and I've got a, uh, cockney one. Alright, right, so we'll look so forward to that. We've got quite a lot of competitions, haven't we? Because you've also got your film competition. He's, uh, appearing in The Shining this week, so. Excellent, okay. Um, we've also got, ooh, chimpanzee <laughs> that. More monkey news from around the world. <laughs> monkey news. Uh, Stay tuned for that. But, there's one that I thought we could phase in as we phased out Rockbusters. It's an old favourite. Carl, it was before your time. 
XF Family Fortunes. XF Family Fortunes, it's brilliant. Get it owes nothing to TV show Family Fortunes. No, it's XF Family Fortunes. You can't get him on that. So we'll be playing that a little bit later as well with two lucky, um, people at the moment. And we'll be giving away some great prizes, I imagine, Steve. Yeah. Go through those a little bit later. Yeah. Um, as it was Valentine's weekend, what about, uh, a lovely song by Lloyd Carr? Oh. Like lovers do. Yeah. Love <laughs> and little Carl will be saying, oh, we're having a laugh, aren't we? Little Carl with his hey, sandwich and that. Up, oh, I'm, a, oh, I'm still bruised where you punched me in the shoulder, showing that you could buy. Box. Yeah, to be fair though, Rick, you do think that you're now a yeah. professional boxer because like you've been on the telly boxing. Yeah. No, he does. Uh, I mean, he laughs about it, but he does walk around thinking, yeah, I could probably handle myself in a yeah. street brawl. In fact, I walk around handling myself. Yeah. A lot of the time, don't yeah. I, Carl? Um, and often <laughs> Carl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it's because it's little round head. I've got another mate that's got a little bald head, and I'd like to squeeze it. Mm. I'd just like to see how far. Do you know what I mean? Like an egg. It, you can squeeze it that way, sort of sideways, and that hurts. But then squeeze it forward to back. It doesn't hurt so much, does it? Do you know what worries me, though? I think <laughs> if you ever actually did crack Carl's head, I think yolk would come out. <laughs> yeah. I did, he was <laughs> drawing, and I gave him a little karate chop on the back of the head, and he jumped. He spasmed. Sorry, <laughs> you gave him a karate chop on the back of the head? Yeah. I to be it. fair, though, I think I'd spasm. <laughs> if a man crept up behind me and karate chopped me in the neck, oh, that's probably a natural God. reaction. Didn't I laugh, eh, oh, yeah. God? Right, good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we got lots of, uh, little things to get through. I mean, look at his little face. You are right. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right, I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right? And, uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh, any of you out there, um, know about this, um, but there's, there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where, uh, there's, do you two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scartly that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut. Like, its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went, instead of, like, thinking this is an amazing experiment, he went, would it, would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining, and I remember you mentioned, because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me, you said, of course, one side of the brain deals with, uh, symbolism. And as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed you took you just a moment longer, and I think the first thing you said was, when did I lose you? Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to disguise it. I think I said chair at one point as well. Right, yeah. And I, I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah. But, yeah. um, I did, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the, on the web, you didn't find anything about it, yeah, the yeah? spelling, the spelling of it's, what, what is it again, what's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't put, couldn't do it. Can't no, it's probably, yeah. don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, I don't know. yours hasn't been cut in half, has <laughs> it, Carl? That would, again, what explain to I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, you, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told him about them. Um, he was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us, evolutionally speaking. They've got their social, um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? Oh, so is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary the ladder? chimp Carl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> talking about so we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Um, uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> 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 the early days of XFM. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain but the rules or do you just want people to phone it's in? It's like family fortunes. We need two of you. <laughs> uh, I asked you- Do you remember we discussed this before? You can't say that. Yeah. Um, and so get two on the line, you're, you're competing against each other, and so it's fingers on the buzzers. Um, will you stop chewing, picking your teeth? It, it's, it, I mean, even if the listeners can't hear, it really annoys me. It is a bit like having a chimp in the room. Do you know what I mean, Carl? All right. Have you ever seen him he eat hot food? No. <laughs> Honestly, it is like a chimp. What are you doing? What? <laughs> Just get. 
Oh, God. <laughs> or like the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm never annoying, Carl, so why are you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Steve? <laughs> You're so annoying. I tell you, have you been with him for trying to go, trying to have lunch with Ricky? Yeah. It's the hardest thing possible. Yeah. You wander around for hours. Com it's sort of a combination, it used to be bad even before he was a celebrity because he has this, the, a tolerance level, I, it's extraordinary. I mean, he is irritated <laughs> by a car honking its horn in the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't believe it, let's go in here, I, I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, he, he gets annoyed by police sirens, by rain, wind, <laughs> birds in the air, other people in the streets. They're the most annoying. Children particularly, whether they're in a school playground we happen to be walking past, <laughs> whether they're on TV. It's just noise that isn't mine. Well, I know, but this is the thing, you are the most irritating man I've ever met, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, you know that car, don't you? I mean, yeah. noises he makes, uh, um, uh, it's extraordinary. I mean, I've been, I've been, well, I've been editing some behind-the-scenes footage we shot of uh, making the second series of The Office. It's extraordinary. I've had to cut sequences out involving Ricky because they'll just think he's a giver, just think he's an idiot, like some kind of puppet that the rest of us are controlling because he's shouting, he's whistling, he's honking, he's making noises, he's dancing around. It's extraordinary. And if you're out trying to find somewhere to eat with him, all these irritants, all these annoyances, and it's, oh, that music's too loud, I don't like that particular song, I'm not going in there. There's more than eight people in that cafe, I'm not going in there. It's just <laughs> extraordinary. I think we need a woman. I'm thinking of hiring a woman, like a PA, to just go out ahead of us, scout ahead of us, go in, you know, and she, she can just phone back and say, Oh, <laughs> sexist. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> or a guy, oh, that's or a fella, oh, sexist, or a fella, just a scout ahead. Oh, a I'm thinking back. of hiring a woman, subservient role. We couldn't hire him. Oh no, oh, sexist. Well, that or a chance to meet a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I'm also yeah. paying. It's like it's like paying for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like more above board. Yeah. So uh, if, if you want to play family fortunes, call up. What's the number? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Yeah, it's just like Family Fortunes. Two of you are competing for some great prizes, and uh, I go um, something you'd you know how it goes, and then <laughs> go buzz and and uh, <laughs> play around board. It's not as high tech <laughs> as Family Fortunes. <laughs>